Good afternoon, family. It is Friday, March 11th. If you're new here, my name is Jonathan, and I created this channel as a way to record my progress as I work towards my goal of achieving a healthy weight. If you do enjoy my video, make sure that you click the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you'll get alerted when I go live. If you'd like to participate in on those live discussions, you can join me live at 4 p.m. Central Time on weekdays, or you can join our Discord, which is, there's a link for that down in the description below, so that you can, uh, the Discord's a great place where you guys can kind of check in, let me know how you're doing, update on your progress, ask me any questions that you may not want to ask on YouTube, things like that. Also down in the description below, we have a link to a Pinterest board. That Pinterest board has a lot of the meals or the recipes for things that we've been enjoying on our whole food plant-based diet. Today is day 496 of my three-year challenge to lose 300 pounds. It means I'm like four days away from day 500 guys that's wild that i've been doing this for so long um i've used a combination of extended water fasting and a whole food plant-based salt oil sugar-free diet to lose 207.4 pounds so far and uh i'm about 16 months through my three-year challenge so i have 20 months to go my goal is to actually reach my weight or my goal is to actually reach the weight of 219.8 this year if I can so that I can spend 2023 maintaining that weight. Carrie's checking in saying happy Friday. I hope everything is going great at home today. We got a big week lined up because kids are on spring break. So the uh, the fun is just about to begin, right? The kids are going to be home full time instead of being at school for a few hours. Uh, if anybody has any non-scale victories they would like to share, I'd love to hear your non-scale victories. Any on-scale victories you want to share, I'd love to hear about those as well. Uh, let me know how you're doing on your diets. If you have any concerns or you're having any, any struggles, uh, I would love to try to help you out in any way possible, whether you're watching this live or not, you know, comment down below, help that uh, YouTube algorithm. Uh, let them know that uh, this is fun video. <laughs> All right. We're going to go to the main page today. I hope you guys all had a good couple days. I haven't been live since Wednesday. So I took a whole day off. Oh my gosh. Such a lazy bones. Harry saying so much more cooking and making of meals, but really is it that much more cooking and making of meals because the kids don't eat anything that you don't make already. So it may seem like it's uh, more cooking, but uh, you just won't be rushed in the morning. You won't be making breakfast and lunch at the same time. You'll get to take your time and make a nice breakfast, you know, maybe a few courses, some waffles and berries and smoothies. And then you get to relax for a couple hours and then make them a really nice lunch, you know? So <laughs> instead of the, the normal cold lunch that they're used to getting at school, uh, anyways, um, the kids. Oh, okay. So when they're home, they're going to eat all day, every day. They're like locusts. That is probably correct. Um, so yeah, I haven't been on since Wednesday. I had to do some traveling yesterday. It was, uh, great to, uh, get to listen to that audio book. And I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, but, uh, I did have some meetings that were a few hours away yesterday and, you know, traveling and being on a diet is always difficult. Um, but you know, I kind of, uh, so what I had going on yesterday is I had to travel about almost three hours away uh, to go to some meetings for four or five hours. And then shortly after lunch, I had to drive back home. So I ended up getting up really kind of early for me yesterday. I got up at about 5 a.m., ate some oatmeal that was actually, uh, it worked out well for me in that Carrie had made uh, oatmeal Wednesday morning and I didn't eat it Wednesday morning. So I had that oatmeal 
for Thursday morning. So I was able to get up quick, reheat some oatmeal, throw it in my belly and get on the road. Um, ended up going out to the meetings. The meetings were great. You know, the, for me, the, every time I go into a public setting and go to meetings like this, I just think about how it would have been two years ago for me to go to these meetings. And, and I did go to some of these meetings a couple of years ago and how much different it, everything was for me, just getting around and being around people and just how much more confident I feel when talking to strangers, things like that. Cause you know, you don't like to think that people are having negative thoughts about you, but when you're over 500 pounds, uh, you kind of just assume that everybody, uh, thinks you're fat and lazy, I guess. So, uh, it was nice to have those meetings. Uh, we did end up having a lunch at the, uh, at the, it was a hotel that we had these meetings at. So we had a lunch that was catered by the group that was putting on the meeting. Um, we, uh, I knew that they were going to be having a lunch. I knew that there was pretty much no chance that they were going to have anything that fit my diet. If they did have anything, it would probably be like salad. And that was the only thing they did have that was even remotely close something i could eat was a salad everything else was pasta or uh like meatballs and spaghetti and uh i can't remember lots of pie there was lots of pie i did notice that everybody had a piece of pie um and uh i knew that i wasn't going to be able to eat uh most of the things they had like i said they had salad but in the salad they had cheese in it, like Parmesan cheese, I guess it was. Uh, and I didn't feel like sitting there picking out the cherry tomatoes and things like that. But I did do. Uh, I did have a, a slight contingency plan, and my slight contingency plan was that I didn't hit the right button on my phones to my phone to get this all set up to start. But um, I ended up bringing my own snack <laughs> there it should pop up on the screen now uh, i grabbed a few oranges from the house and threw them in my pocket so that when it got to lunchtime if i felt that i was hungry and they didn't have any options for me i did have something to eat i know it's not a lot of calories and it's not you know a full meal but it gave me something to do while everybody else with was eating. I'm sure everybody at my table thought I was a little bit crazy because I brought my own oranges. Uh, there were not oranges there. So I was the only person that was eating oranges, uh, in the whole room. So, but I didn't really care. It allowed me to stay compliant on my diet. At the end of the day, I've said this many times. I would, I, I fasted for 42 days. If I have to skip a meal, I can figure out how to skip a meal. It wasn't going to be the end of the world. I might have been really hungry when I got home. And I was pretty hungry when I got home because I had those oranges and finished up with the meeting shortly after that. And then I had a three hour drive to get home. So it had been, you know, I guess it was, yeah, it was almost 12 hours between breakfast and when I got home. And I did eat quite a bit when I got home. Let me see. I did, uh, I kind of skipped around here cause I didn't, uh, I usually don't take a day off, but just kind of going over the food that I ate since last Wednesday, this real quick, this was the salad that we had on Wednesday evening. As you can see, lots of spinach, you got some, uh, cabbage and carrots. Uh, the star of the show though, is gotta be the mushrooms. I love having the mushrooms in there. And then we use a uh, mustard. Or, yeah, we use a, a mustard dressing that Carrie makes that I really enjoy. Uh, let's see. Also on that, the, oh yeah, Wednesday night, Carrie had also uh, air fried up some potato wedges and we had those on Wednesday evening. That sauce there is that mustard dressing that we put on the salad. So I just had more of that mustard dressing. I, I really enjoy that dressing. I mean, it's, it's mustard and it's, it's syrup. So it's going to be pretty good stuff. Um, or it's going to taste good. 
And then those are the oranges that I had at the meeting. Uh, everything with the meetings went great. I kind of talked about how it was nice to be, you know, lighter and just more confident in the meetings. Uh, and then when I got home yesterday, uh, that's not yesterday's dinner. Yesterday we had for dinner. Oh, Carrie made these chicken patties. Um, I don't know if she's going to share the recipe on the, the Pinterest or on the discord. They were like a chickpea based, um, patty that she had put together. Uh, they were, they were good. I, there wasn't, you know, it wasn't like it was, uh, amazing you know i mean and it's one of those things where that type of uh the, the patty itself you know is just kind of part of the meal it's what you know like i dipped it into uh some sauce carrie had made i don't think it was the oh yeah it was the sour cream sauce that carrie had made a week or so or within the last week that uh i kind of spread on there carrie had taken it and put it on a tortilla and put some spinach on it. I think she even took a little bit of cucumber, put it on top of that, made like a nice little wrap. I should have taken a photo of her dinner and then showed it off and been like, hey, look at this. Uh, it was, uh, she says uh, she can share the recipe. They were okay. They would have been great with barbecue sauce. Yeah, our kids did enjoy it with the barbecue sauce, but that is not something that is, um, on our diet normally, or we don't have barbecue sauce. It just doesn't happen. Carrie was making tomato sauce. So I imagine we're going to have something with tomato sauce in it in the next few days. But, um, and then this morning we tried something a little bit different. Instead of having our normal oatmeal with bananas and apples, we tried to have a little bit more of a, a savory breakfast. And this is oatmeal. Uh, it's got carrots and spinach and red peppers. Uh, I'm not sure what she used, uh, as a sauce, I guess, maybe a, a, an oat milk or a soy milk, but I'm not sure. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was really good. Uh, it was as good as our regular oatmeal or close to as good as our regular oatmeal. It's so weird because we eat oat groats and steel cut oats. Now we don't eat a lot of rolled oats and this I don't think would have tasted a whole lot different if it would have just been brown rice instead of oatmeal, but we were trying something new and I enjoyed, uh, that for breakfast this morning. I think that's all of the food photos I have to show for yet yeah, to you guys here. Um, I did snack a decent bit, you know, the couple things that I've been thinking about are kind of, questioning in my diet is how much of the nut butters that I eat. And then, um, the, uh, the, the actual, just the cashews and things like that. Anthony's checking in saying, Hey, Hey, Anthony, I hope everything's going great for you. Uh, Harry said there was no sauce. It was just turmeric and some non salt seasoning from Costco. It was creamy. Yeah, it was really creamy. That's why I figured you had something in there, but, um, it was just something different for breakfast. We're going to try to do some things with that. And I'll kind of explain that more as I get into the topic I was going to go over today. Um, did you make that with rice? No, that was made with oatmeal. Uh, that was uh, oat groats and steel cut oats. But I think that it could have been... You could have made that with rice. It probably would have uh, tasted very similar. It's funny how the, the oat groats and rice texture wise aren't a whole lot different. You know, you eat them very similar. Um, that, yeah, I think he was asking about the, the oatmeal from breakfast. If you asked if you made that rice, uh, I'm imagining is what he's assuming, but uh, we'll see. this less creamy with rice i imagine yeah yeah that was yeah so it was it was uh it was oat groats and not rice that was what that picture was there and uh yeah we didn't have any so um the uh i was traveling a lot yesterday and 
trying to figure out the best way to do this. I got to move over here a little bit. Hopefully it doesn't screw anything up. And I'm going to do this. It's the first time I am going to do a, uh, a book review. So on my trip to, uh, Carrie says, have I felt any different starting my day with veggies? I don't know. Um, I, I was fairly productive today. I don't know if I noticed a direct difference. Did you notice a difference starting your day with veggies today, Carrie? Um, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to go into my book review. So over the last couple days, uh, and on my trip yesterday, I had an opportunity to, uh, check out the, the, so I checked out the secret to ultimate weight loss, a revolutionary approach to conquer cravings, overcome food addiction and lose weight without going hungry. This book was written by chef AJ with Glenn Merzer. So I recently picked up the book and by picked up, I mean, downloaded the audio book. Uh, I traveled a lot this week, so I was able to listen to the book. It's less than six hours, so it doesn't take up a lot of time. I really enjoyed the book and it was really nice to listen to the, it was really nice to listen to somebody who's so invested with eating a whole food plant-based SOS free diet and isn't a doctor. They're actually a patient or they're actually somebody who's changed their life by eating this way. So the book itself breaks down to about 50% of it is information and her secrets to ultimate weight loss. And then the other 50% of it is recipes. It says that it has over 100 mouthwatering recipes. And so the book really is great for people that are kind of just getting started with this diet or this way of eating because it gives you kind of the concepts and the, the information you need to know about eating this way. But it also gives you a bunch of recipes to try out or to give you know, to get started eating a whole food plant-based diet. In the beginning of the book, she does talk a lot about her own history with food addiction and obesity. In the beginning of the book, she explains a lot about her history with food, obesity, eating disorders, and shares some very personal stories about her childhood Getting to a healthy weight was not easy for her, and she still continues to, to have to deal with these struggles from her younger years. And I'm not going to reveal all of her secrets completely, but uh, the key component to all of this, I don't know if anybody can guess what the key component might be. I'll give you a second maybe to guess it, guess here, but... If you've been following along with my uh, streams recently, or maybe even the topic last time, what do you think the big secret that Chef AJ is going to reveal is? Anybody have any guesses? Um, <laughs> Carrie says she wasn't very productive today. You got any guesses? Give everybody a second. If you're not watching live, you can guess too. All right. A couple more seconds. All right. No salt or sugar. No, it's part of it. The biggest part of this calorie density. Watch my stream from when <laughs> Anthony says Twinkies. No, it's not Twinkies. No Twinkies. Calorie density. That's what a big part of this is. It's, it's eating that below 600 calorie per pound foods, not the foods that are above 600 calories per pound. So in the book, like I said, calorie density is a big part of this. He goes on to explain what her ultimate weight loss program is and how to use the concept of calorie density to get off those unwanted pounds. And the basics of her diet are very similar to my diet. You know, low fat, whole foods, plant exclusive. Uh, she kind of further delves in, you know, it's free of all processed foods, no sugar, including added sweeteners and zero calorie sweeteners. All flour products are removed from the diet. 
oils removed, salts removed, and alcohol is removed. So it's pretty much our diet. We probably have a little bit of flour in there that we have to maybe, I don't know if we have much, but uh, that would be the only thing that would be kind of a little different. So the, uh, but that's kind of the basics of her diet, you know, low fat, whole food, plant exclusive, no processed foods, no sugar, no flour, no oil, no salt, no alcohol. And in the book, she lists out kind of a few different concepts that help people stick to the diet or help you remember the basics of the diet. And one of those is her seven C's to success. And some of those are pretty easy to guess, like commitment or consistency. But one of the big ones that I feel it gets overlooked or is very important, especially eating this way is community because eating this way is tough. It, for one, you're learning a completely different way of cooking or you're learning how to cook things that are completely different than you used to cook. So finding a community that can help you find recipes or ways to cook this way can be very important and really be a key to succeeding with this, but also a big reason why community is so important is because this diet is so isolating. Other than Carrie, I don't know anybody who eats this way in my personal life. And so like, I can't really go out to eat with a lot of people or I can't do things or I look like, a, I look like the weirdo at the table eating oranges while that I brought in my pocket while everybody else is eating the bowls of pasta and meatballs and pie, you know? Um, so yeah. So other than Carrie, nobody in my life eats this way. And everybody who knows me that doesn't eat this way thinks I'm crazy for eating this way. So for me, that, sea of commitment is kind of something not commitment the sea of community is really important because that is something that i think on any diet you need a support network you need people to help you get through these tough times and having that community that you can fall back onto and say hey i'm having a hard time today that is just something that if you don't have that, it's so easy to grab those temptations and, and eat them. Uh, John, do you eat fruit? Do you add fruit to your morning? So generally we do have fruit, but this morning we did not. The first time we have had oatmeal and not had fruit in it. So as well as the seven C's, the success that she discusses, she also has the Chef AJ's 10 commandments. And they're kind of... This is her rules to live by kind of thing. And there, you know, some of the things are, are simple things that most people can agree on, like thou shalt exercise, you know, but one of my favorites is thou shalt not embellish my food with chemicals. I thought that was great because that's really what you're doing when you're adding salt, oil, and sugar is you're embellishing your food with these chemicals that aren't found in nature, in the concentration that we have them just readily available through the, the salt shaker or by, you know, the, the container of salt you have in, in your fridge. So thou shalt not embellish my food with chemicals. Also, that would be like the zero calorie sweeteners too. Um, and finally, you know, so there's this seven C's to success. There's the AJ's 10 commandments. And then finally, a big part of the book and uh, probably one of the places where she has more experience than most people is how to eat healthfully anywhere. Because eating at home is, you can control that. You can get rid of all the temptations. You can remove everything from the outside world and only allow foods that are diet compliant in your house. But when you have to travel or when you have to go to meetings or you have to go to family functions, that's where a lot of times the diets start to, you know, the cracks start to appear in your diet. And Chef AJ, prior to COVID, she was on the road all of the time doing 
guest lectures and teaching people about this and going to conferences and doing uh, did speeches on cruises and things like that. And even with not being at home a lot, she was able to figure out how to eat a whole food plant-based SOS free diet. And that seems like an impossible task in some ways, you know, but she talks a lot in this book about ways you can get through these times where it, it's going to be difficult, you know, and you have to recognize when these events are coming up or when you're going to have these situations where um, you're eating outside of the house. And you have to kind of look at, are you going to be in control of the food that you're eating or are you letting other people control that food that you're eating? And when you're looking at a situation where other people are controlling the food that you're going to be eating, you have to find ways to either maybe wrestle back a little bit of that control. Maybe it's going to somebody's party and bringing your own dessert, or maybe it is having a chef make something special for you. And the, you know, you may have to fib a little bit and say, I'm allergic to oil or I got something, you know, I can't have salt, you know, cause it causes these issues. Um, the other thing she talks about, which I thought was interesting was, uh, like getting a mini fridge at a hotel. We recently went to a hotel that we anticipated that there was going to be a mini fridge and then there wasn't a mini fridge. We made do without having that mini fridge, but it would have been nice to have. And she said that when she runs into that situation, she just lets the front desk know, Hey, well, that's fine. I'm on some medication that has to be refrigerated. So I'm going to leave that medication with you guys. And I'll just come down, you know, I'm gonna have to come down three or four times a day to get my medication out so I can have my medication. And once the front desk kind of realized the hassle was going to be to let this lady come in and go to their fridge in the back room, a mini fridge magically appeared in her room. So, you know, they may not wanted to do it just because they were lazy, but then once they realized that they were going to be inconvenienced either way, then they found a way to, to, to get her a fridge that wasn't available before. Um, you know, if you're going out to restaurants, you can look at the menu ahead of time. See if there's any elements in other dishes that you can eat. We did that when we went out to a restaurant uh, about a year ago. They had um, a meal that had asparagus as a side on the meal, and but they didn't have asparagus listed on their menu. So you can look at other items and be like, well, if they have asparagus for that fish meal, then that means they have asparagus in the back. Hey, can I get just a side of your steamed asparagus? Kind of little ways to still get yourself some food or doing things a little bit more creative than uh, you would have thought, you know, you have to get, a, you have to get a little creative sometimes. Right. Um, and then at the end of the day, I kind of mentioned this earlier. You can always choose not to eat. There is plenty of evidence of people being even at a healthy weight or being underweight and being able to survive four or five hours without eating. So if you get into a situation where there's nothing that's compliant, then maybe you just decide to go without. A lot of times you can make that easier by loading up and eating before you go to a restaurant or go to a place. And then it makes it a little bit easier to choose not to eat when you're there. Uh, one of the items that we want to implement from the books is the vegetables for breakfast. I've heard Chef AJ talk about this in the past, and I've even listen or seeing guests on her show thank her for the idea in this book she talks a lot about how that is one of the biggest contributions that she has found to people's success is when they start having some non-starchy vegetables for breakfast and this kind of from what i understood from the book kind of came from the people she was helping she was saying hey you guys need to eat two three pounds of these vegetables and they weren't able to eat that much if they only ate them for lunch and dinner. So they started to add them into their breakfast. And once they realized that they were eating these vegetables for breakfast, they noticed that their cravings for sweet things later in the day was reduced. 
because if you start your day off with sugar or sweet things, then the whole day you're going to be trying to get sweet taste. And so that is a concept that we hadn't really adopted before. And we're going to try to find some ways to start eating vegetables for breakfast. The nice thing about that is that with this book, we got access to over a hundred mouthwatering recipes. Many of those recipes are her vegetable for breakfast recipes. Um, so that is kind of a review of the secret to ultimate weight loss written by chef AJ. It was really a quick book to get through the actual text and reading portion of the book is only about 115 pages. So it's not going to take a ton of time to read it. And then there's another hundred plus pages of recipes there available for you. It wasn't a heavy read like a lot of the books that I've been reading recently have been. And it was great to hear about not only her experiences, but also of the people who she's been coaching over the years because she's been eating this way for a little while now and she's had very good success and she's had a lot of her clients or customers who have had success as well. So if you get an opportunity to pick up The Secret to Ultimate Weight Loss by Chef AJ, I do recommend that you take the time to pick it up and read the book. Pull this down. That was my first ever live book review. I hope that you guys enjoyed my book review of Chef AJ's book. Uh, Anthony had a couple questions here. Um, he said, so are natural oils okay? Like extra virgin olive oil? No, no. That's all that, that extra virgin olive oil. If you live it, I, the stream I did on Wednesday, I talk a lot about calorie density. That extra virgin olive oil is 4,000 calories per pound. So that means even just a little bit of it is a couple hundred calories. So when you add those oils to your cooking, you're just adding extra calories that aren't necessary because when you eat that oil, so let's say you saute some food in oil, that means that that food is now covered in that oil And when you eat it, your body registers the fiber from the food and it recognizes the food that you're eating as a a substance, but it doesn't recognize the oil. So you could just eat all kinds of oil and your body would never get satisfied because it's not registering it as food. Um, And uh, and it's really of all of the things that you can remove from your diet, just removing the oil would be huge. I don't think I can I think. Yeah, I don't have the uh, the slideshow up. Uh, yeah, but so yeah, getting rid of the oil is big. Probably the, you know, if, if you look at the calorie density chart that I had put up on uh, Wednesday, if you really just started from the right side and started eliminating things, you know, start with the oil, then go to the, the milk chocolate, then go to the fried foods, then go to the, uh, I can't remember what was next. I think breads. Yeah. Like the white breads and things like that. And then the meats and then the avocados, you know, like start from the right side of that and eliminate those one by one. Eventually you'll get to eating a whole food plant-based diet because nothing that if you're eating a whole food plant-based diet, then almost everything is under 600 calories. And if you're eating under 600 calories, then it's really tough. If you're eating under 600 calories per pound, then it's really tough to overeat on calories per day because even at five pounds, you're at 3,000 calories. And five pounds of some of those foods is a lot of food. You know, I think a pound of apples might be six apples. Let me see. Apples in a pound. And so that's. It's all relative to, but let's see on average doesn't tell me, uh, how much does four apples weigh Four average large apples is, uh, 20 ounces. Of course it's going to be, so it's over a pound. It's about three and a half apples, you know, to get to a pound. So you just sat down and ate three and a half normal size apples. That's a, that's a decent amount of food, you know? Um, 
So really, uh, like the book kind of said, a big part of this is calorie density. I'm going to keep hounding on calorie density because it's like the most important part of this. I was eating such incredibly uh, calorie dense foods before. Like I said in the stream, the, most of the foods I was eating were three times uh, the calories you should be eating per pound. And that's why I ended up being three times what a person should weigh. So, um, this weekend, we have a few things going on. I don't think we're going to be super busy this weekend. I'm pretty sure that the weather is still going to be cold. That spring kind of came in, or we had that nice weather for like two days. I was like, oh, shit. And I, I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> Spring's here. So I took the kids' sleds and I put them up on the rafters of our uh, garage. And then yesterday, we had to dig the sleds down so the kids could go sledding. So. I don't know when winter's winter is going to end. Hopefully it is soon so that we can get outside and have a lot of fun. Uh, the, I got to, I don't think I have anything else going on this weekend. Next week, like I said, it's going to be spring break with the kids. I think my streaming schedule is going to be mostly normal. The only thing that might change about my streaming next week is that my day 500 is on Tuesday. I might move my way in up Tuesday instead of Wednesday because I would like to weigh in on my 500th day. And if I can get under that 310, what was it? It was 310 something was my lowest. I wrote it down like two days ago. I don't know where I wrote it down. But if I can get under that 310 mark, that would be the lowest that I've been since I've started this. And that would make me really happy to hit that by day 500. Uh, and then, yeah, the kids are going to be going out of town. So I'm going to be fending for myself. So I may just fast the whole time that Carrie's gone. That would be easy enough to do, huh? Just fast. And then I don't have to worry about eating uh, or cooking myself any food. How lazy is that, huh? Just instead of making my own dinner, I'm just going to fast. Anyways, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get out of here now. I hope you all have a great weekend. If you haven't started your diet yet, what are you waiting for? Why haven't you started? You need to get started right now. Don't wait till after the weekend. Get into your cupboards. Get rid of all the processed foods. Get out to the grocery store. Buy all those fresh fruits and fresh veggies and fill your cupboards with bright, beautiful foods. But get started right now. Nobody gets to their goal. Nobody gets to the end of this whole thing and says, man, I should have waited. Why did I, what was I in a hurry for? Why did I, I mean, I could have waited months. You know, nobody ever gets to that point. Why, before you start, you're like, I can wait months because I got the rest of my life to do it. Well, you know, how long is the rest of your life going to be if you're 500 pounds? So get started right now. The only regret I have is I wish I would have started sooner. That's the only regret, not the only, but it's the biggest regret most people have is not getting started sooner. Uh, don't fall for the myths of moderation got to go all in guys the myth of moderate change the myth of moderate consumption their tricks their traps it's a trap you got to go all in get it going guys i will be back on on monday i appreciate you all greatly